Hello everyone and welcome to this first Fantasy Trippers show um, from the LFC Day Trippers. Uh, this show will be on YouTube only. Um, <clears throat> we're hoping to record this every week and release it every Wednesday morning on YouTube. Um, so, what's it all about? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory. Fantasy Trippers, it's the fantasy football that everyone gets involved in, or a lot of people get involved with, I suppose, as the season goes on, through the official um Premier League Fantasy Football app. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at it every week. Players that have been really good, players that have been really bad, players you might want to get, players you might want to release. Um, <clears throat> the rules around it, some tips, all that sort of stuff. Um, the man I've brought with me to do this is my good friend Tino. Tino is going to be the one that's going to look up the stats every week. He's going to pick out players for you. Um, he's going to go through the rules. Uh, as I said, the rules, the tips, the deals, the don'ts. And he's going to educate me as we go along because um, I I think I know what I'm talking about when it comes to football. I know nothing about fantasy football. So this is going to be an education for me as well as you. And uh, Tino's going to provide that. Tino, how the hell are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. So, people watching this, Tino, will see on the bottom of the screen, um, it basically just says to join our league. If you, um, So, if we, am I right in saying, Tino, that you go onto the, the Fantasy Football app, um, you download it, you pick your side, you name your side, then you can join leagues. You go to, uh, it's a private league, I think, but it's it's open to everybody, and the code there is CP. WY14. It's going across the bottom of the screen there. And that's it then, Tino. They're in the league. Is that right? That's it. It's, it's that simple. Okay. Um, this show is brought to you by 3 Retro. 3 Retro have told us that at the end of every calendar month, we can pick somebody we can give a prize to. It will vary as the months go on. You will get people that, you know, you know, top the monthly leaderboard, you know, and they get a prize. And we might do little, you know, we see someone that's, you know, started off two weeks late and they're flying. You go, oh, he might be worth a prize. So we'll pick a prize for it. For between me and Tino, we will pick someone to give a prize to um, every every calendar month as we go along. But Three Retro are a great sponsor for us. They they always support everything we're doing. So yeah, get on to them uh, at Three Retro um, underscore on Twitter and Three Retro dot com. You'll find it. They do all this the retro jerseys. Not only Liverpool, they do stuff international stuff. They do tracksuit tops. They do jerseys. Really good company. So get involved with that. So Tino. Um, I'm, you are literally the, the you are literally the teacher, and I am the student in this. Okay, so what I'm going to start off with is um, people will see on the right hand side of the screen, you will see um, the LFC Day Trippers League. Um, we're going to put the first, the top eight in that every every week. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of the names and the points they have as the show goes on. But you know, I suppose this is all about players, and it's all about picking the right players and stuff like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a couple of the obvious ones. Okay. Um, the obvious ones to me when I thought about this really quickly was Sterling, Salah, Kane, Aguero, Mane, De Bruyne maybe. I presume these are players that a lot of people that are playing this game will have on their side because of A goals and B assists. Yeah, without a doubt. They're the players that should form really the core or, or part of the core of your team. Um, because away from that, it's all about taking a bit of a risk. Um, but making sure you have the base amount your base is covered so Sterling had an outstanding year last year um, Salah as we know the three season wonder um, Kane's always been consistent as has Aguero Mane has looked very very good this season um, so far um, someone like Obama Yang as well joint top goal yeah. scorer these are the guys um, and even up, up top they're the guys that you should be you should be looking at um, in to to form the basis of your team, um, the rest of the squad, other than you're looking at what Virgil Van Dijk, Trent, uh, Robertson, uh, the rest of your squad should be flitted in and around with. Um, I think I think some of the promoted sides and the lower leagues, lower tiered sides in the league. Um, you need to you need to keep an eye because there's some very very talented young um, players that that you can pick and you can get for for relatively cheap um, and they can do do your bits. Um, someone like Ashley Barnes, I really like as a um, for Burnley. Um, mm -hmm. Not an out, not a big name, not an outstanding name, 
but he's gonna. He, he works hard for Burnley. He um, three goals already this season, twelve goals, two assists in the uh, Premier League last season for Burnley. Um, and I think he's got eighteen points already, which it, which is currently level with Kevin De Bruyne. He's someone that is virtually guaranteed to be in that Burnley side. He works damn hard every single. Um, every single game for Burnley um, so he's, he's just one of the ones who I look at and I think could could bump you up he's not going to score a hat-trick every single game he's not going to get you like the like the 15 20 plus points that you want um, but he's going to he's going to boost you he's going to boost you a bit um, same as if you look at Lucas Ding 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 yeah. I, I, I have no idea how to pronounce his Lucas name Lucas Ding yeah. Lucas Digne. Yeah. Um as much as like, it pains me to say it, given it's an Everton player, um, at six mil as his price, I think that's a, a genuinely an outstanding price for someone who got 158 points in the fantasy league last year. Um, again, going forward, he's, he's he's not done too badly. Four goals, four assists last uh, for for Everton, and it, defensively as well, he's 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 not too bad with 12 clean sheets. Um, so. He's another one who who was up there in terms of getting up like with the top defenders um, yeah. for your fantasy league, and these are the type of players who aren't the big names. They're not they're not necessarily gonna um, do absolutely outstanding every single game for the rest of the season, but they're gonna they're gonna boost you and they're gonna do well. Um, and it's always it's always a good idea to keep an eye on these. Uh, Lower tiered, I guess, teams. Um, so, so let, let me let me put this simply to you, right? You have to pick. Is it fifteen players you have to pick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and and the budget is a um, hundred million, I believe. A hundred a hundred million. Okay. Hundred and something million. <clears throat> okay. So so am I right in saying then that what you do is you pick three? Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a strategy to go out and pick three really. It, you know, I'm presuming you have to pick two goalkeepers and that. Um, yeah, two goalkeepers. Five and defenders. Then, yeah. Five midfielders. Um, I believe so, and then yeah, you've got your the three attackers. Okay. okay, and then you pick your your formation as you want to go throughout the throughout the season. So yeah, uh, for me now, as someone that you know wouldn't play this all the time, for me it's just get three fellas in there that are going to guarantee your goals every week. Get a couple of defenders that are really solid in solid teams, and then lash in a lot of cheap lads to to keep you within the budget. Or, Pretty uh, much, yeah, okay. Pretty much, that's so, that's the vast. That's what a lot, a lot of people do. That's a, that's a relatively good strategy. Okay, so um, so if for argument's sake, I know what the forwards get. The forwards get got points for goals and assists. All right. Do they yeah. get Do they get points for clean sheets? Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Know? I don't think I I'm off the top of my head I don't know. Right. Um, so you're but but when you go back to defenders, they're going to get extra points if you score a goal, I presume. Yeah. Because they're a defender. Midfielders are going to get stuff for you know, um you know, clean sheets and, and, and goals and assists as well. So uh, it, it, there, 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 do you know something? There's an awful lot more to think about this in this when you actually try, you know, throwing a load of lads together and staying within budget is one thing, but then you know, trying to put it together where you don't want to pick four defenders from newly to promote teams because they're going to get they could get bashed the majority of weeks and yeah. they're obviously got not going to make you many points. So you're you're trying to do a do a balancing act with that, you know. Um, you may I uh, just just talking about newly promoted teams. Um, Timu Puki of Norwich, right? I looked him up earlier. Um, six point seven million, which in the grand scale of things is not a lot of money. Um, massive in the championship for Norwich last year. Um, four goals in two games already, including a hat-trick against Newcastle. Um, he got one against Liverpool. Um, you know, he's he's absolutely flying. He's a virtually guaranteed starter. I think he's a great show for being in your side if you wanted to pack your team, I suppose, in midfield with really creative midfielders rather than hard workers. And, you know, taking that little bit out of your striking money by able to put him in. Because as you said, he looks like a guy that if Norwich are going to score goals, he's going to be the man to do it. Oh, without a shout, he's, he's guaranteed to, to be in that team every single week. Like you say, he did incredibly well in the championship. And if he can even... Do half um, of that. 
yeah, if he can even do, yeah, literally half a third of what he did in the Championship in the Premier League, then he's going to get you tons and tons of points. I saw on one of the overalls, um, someone captained him. I think it was he was th- at the moment as of recording this, the, the most amount of points like of everybody doing fantasy, uh, fantasy Premier League, um, and he got I think it was like fifty one points. Jesus. Um, because he captained him. And having someone like him in your squad, I think it's 24 points already so far. His second highest behind, um, I'm, I think it's Sterling. Okay. Um, and he's he's relatively cheap, as you say. And he's, he's a good one. He's a good one to have in your squad um, to, to, to change and move about depending on who they're playing. Because if you look at it, he, he, when they played Liverpool, Norwich, let's be realistic, they weren't good. And they were, they were only real bright spark. I think it was Cantwell and uh, himself, Timu Puki. Um, and having a, such a good game, even though Norwich played, well, they were a disaster, um, having lost 4-1, I think shows his quality. Um, so if you look at Norwich, they're playing, I think it's Chelsea this on the 24th. Um, maybe not in terms of, maybe don't put him in or maybe move him to your bench for the, for these types of games, but against the lower league, lower tiered sides in the Premier League, bottom half Premier League sides, he could do bits. He could, he could really, really score the goals. And as you said, he proved it against Newcastle um, with his, with his hat trick. It was, Outstanding. Admittedly, Newcastle were shocking, but he's the type of player to to really change a game for Norwich, um, which is which is nice to see. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know what? I'm just uh, I just think the likes of that player, like you mentioned, Ashley Barnes, Timu Puki. You know, a lot of people will try. You know, I suppose load it up at the top end and hope that spend all your money there and. The, the, the gains you would get from the attackers will outdo the the losses you would get, I suppose, off, off the, the, the much cheaper defenders, you know. Um, but, like, for me, looking at the league, if you can get a goalkeeper, say, from a Leicester or a Wolves in there at a decent price, and, you know, in around the middle of the table where you can fill your squad and then top load it, you know, at, at the top, I think that's I think that's a decent a decent strategy to have. Um, just looking at the at, <coughs> at the leaderboard. Um, so you we have uh, let me see we have I have to put the top eight on there. Right? So uh, the team and the manager um, eighty six points this week from Court Attard uh, with a total of one five six. Okay. Um, second is uh, a really good name Eeny Meeny Mane Mo, which is really good. I really like that. <laughs> That's from a guy called William. Um, he's on 146 points. Uh, you have Clotimus Prime, uh, that's Samir, with 142 points. You have Snaggy FC from Declan Murphy, which is 136 points. And you have FC Squinch by Is a Gway Pepple, 135 points. You have Red Orange by Suresh Nair at 133. You have Wick Rovers from Colm Dolan, 132. And then you just have Six Stars from Ryan Eastwood at 130. So... Like two weeks in, there's only 25 points between the top eight. There, there's about 170 people in this league. I think um, the overall on of the overall competition, the whole thing is 200 points. So these guys aren't doing too bad. You know, 40 40 points off the lead after two weeks sounds an awful lot, but you could, like you said, somebody captains a player like that. You know, it'd be like captain uh, having say Joe Linton. Uh, is it Joe Leeton or Joe Linton that that plays for the Newcastle lad? Yeah, to play for yeah, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah, forty million pounds. Yeah, Newcastle. yeah, but you, you, yeah. you might you might get him at a decent price. You, you triple captain him one week. He goes out and he scores three against from anybody. You know that kind of way can happen. Newcastle have these kind of results in them from time to time. Although with Steve Bruce at the helm, probably not as much. But <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, forty points in this game week, is nothing. One is week it? can change it. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I shadow it out. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep these stats like this, this week's top eight. Have a look at next week's top eight. Like I'm looking at um like the, the, the from position four to position eight, they've all moved up this week. Um, Samir, who's in position three, uh, has moved down. Court has obviously moved up to number one, and William has stayed at at, at a level. 
which is second, you know. So uh, I'm presuming that, you know, people think, oh, I'm 80 points down or I'm 100 points down. That can be made up if you pick the right things, can't it? Over, over the over the course of the over the course of the season and choose them wisely with transfers and triple captains and wild cards and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, without a doubt. Cause my first week was I'm, I'm not going to lie. My first week was appalling. I got 43 points. Mm. Um, I had Allison in goal, which didn't really go that well. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. It, it really didn't go well for me. Um. And I've got 70 points this week. I'm not right at the top. Um. Got to be honest, I've completely forgot to change my team. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's all about it's all about week by week, keeping an eye on the games, keeping an eye on the, on the players you have in the team, looking at who they're playing, and seeing seeing if it's likely that they can score a few. So if you've got um, no offense to Diogo Jota of uh, Wolves. of Wolves, but if you've got him and like they're, they're playing one of the top six, it's it's you look at Wolves' results last season against the top six. They've done v- very, very well. They, they've performed quite consistently against the, the top sides in the Premier League. Is it likely that he's going to get a goal or two? It's possible. So taking risk, making sure you're keeping an eye on the games um, it is really, really important. Um, and not just forgetting about your team after like the first three weeks. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm like that. I'll, I'll put it in and a month in, I'll forget all about it. You know, and I'll go back then about three months there and go, oh, it's much, you're not doing all right. You know, I, I literally put a team in and aut- automated it. I think I've still about 10 million to spend, but my team is in there. Um, so, you know, that's that's just the way it goes. Um, before we finish up, Tino, because we're going to keep this to about 20 minutes every week, we're not, me and you aren't going to bore people for an hour because, you know, I know people that go on about this for about an hour and it's it's madness. Um, but... You know, uh, you have you you sent me a couple of tips and like I literally thought they were for me. They're obviously not the for the, the viewer, but I'll take them on board. You know, you say try not to to forget about the league. Look at the games each week and decide based on that. Like when I read that straight away, I thought, well, I have a goalkeeper and say I have a goalkeeper that's mid range and goalkeeper like a Schmeichel or it could be someone off Burnley or and then you have say an Aguero and Aguero's playing against Burnley. Is that the time to say, oh, here, get that keeper out of there. Put, put, put the other keeper in because this keeper's going to get slaughtered by Aguero. You know, going the way. There's, there's two ways of looking at that. You could think, if, let's let's say, let's take Norwich and Chelsea, um, the early kickoff on the 24th. Mm. Um, you, you could look at that and think, Chelsea are going to absolutely destroy um destroy Norwich and they're, they're going to score a lot of goals and you, you're going to lose points via your goalkeeper but he makes one or two good saves keep Norwich go forward a bit He they manage to keep a clean sheet and you've got t- nine, ten points and that's a good basis to come from um, it's if if I was in if I was in that situation and I had the Norwich City I, I don't know his name but and I had the Norwich City goalkeeper I'd, I'd take him out for the Chelsea game personally, mm. um, but it's 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 all about looking at the team and as you said, just just decide based on the games. Don't try and try and stay safe, um, but do take a risk on one or two players. Um, and yeah, the the newly promoted sides in the the bottom half of the team, but the Premier League table always great to look and scour through. Um, because you're going to get some some real gems in there where um, they're going to be relatively cheap, relatively affordable, and they're going to do really, really well. If you look at, I think it's Lundstrom from um, Chef United. Yeah. Um, did incredibly well this, this week. Um, I, th- I think it was 14 points. I'm, I'd correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know. But it was around the 14 points, Mark. Chef United won. He did. He did incredibly well. Having someone like that, someone like Cantwell, Puki, Ashley Barnes, as we've mentioned before, one of those, uh, one of the players in there, or two of the players in there, you can really, really start to fill out your squad in terms of points and not just heavily rely on the on the core base. Um, but as we've mentioned before, captains, vice captains, so important. Um, it can take you from having an absolutely appalling week, getting thirty odd points, to 
getting close to, to 70 plus points. Yeah, because obviously if, if, if your captain is, is on form and gets a couple of goals, he'd, he'll, um, he'll make up the points for the lads that haven't performed, I presume. Yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. Okay. But it's all about rotating, keeping an eye on the on the on the the uh, the players, the teams, and don't don't forget. Always always remember about injuries. You don't want to be caught out where you've got one or two players who are who injured and won't play. Are injured again. and you yeah. you haven't replaced them, and it's yeah. Because yeah. Uh, one thing I was told about it was that if you do have one or two lads that are injured, um, what happens is. Uh, they're in your side, okay? They're in your side, they're injured, you don't play, you get zero points. And then you could have two lads on the bench that you could have replaced them with, and then boys go out and have really good weeks, and they're, they're, it's at the cost of 20 or 30 points. So you're right in what you say. Watch out for injuries. Watch out for, if you want to captain and, and, and voice captain people, especially if they're on form one and two, they're playing against a team that you fancy them to actually really play well, really well against, where it can really be a bonus to you, uh, points-wise. So... You're right in what you're saying there. Um, we'll do this again next week. So when we come back next week, we're going to have another look at, at the, the, the the table in our own league, the table overall. Um, our, our league winner or our league leader is only 40 points off the actual top, which is, I know it's early days, but look, it's, it just shows, you know, one or two good weeks and you can really prepare yourself. We'll have a look at players that have done really well and um, players that haven't, players that have nightmares. Um, Adrian could be one of them for what he done, <laughs> but uh, you know we will every week we're gonna have a look at players that are good, players that are bad, injuries, uh, suspensions, um, players you might want to transfer, and of course things like triple captains and, and wild cards and, and different bits and pieces like that. I'm going to go and I'm going to read up a bit more on this for next week because um, what happens is I get this in my head. I'm a really um, stubborn person, so if I feel that I can do well at this, I won't stop. So you'll probably find me on next week telling you, Tino. That this is what you should. I should. I'll be telling you next week what should be done, and then you'll be going, "Fuck off, God, will you?" You know, <laughs> yeah, you haven't got a clue, and that's what'll usually happen. But uh, no, you know, it's been really good. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's uh, it's been it's been a lesson on uh, on on the Premier League and 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 the, the fantasy football. So, um, you'll join me next week, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Okay. So, me and you will have a look through all the games. Uh, during the week we'll watch as much football as we can we'll pick out some players and we'll be back here next week this show should be come out come out here every wednesday morning so uh, yeah we'll see you next wednesday um have a good one over now <laughs>